Hi guys, Gabi from Your Path Hacks here. Today's quick video is about process arguments. We will see what they are, where to define them, and what is the priority in which the values will be considered based on how the process is run. For demonstration, we will have a very simple workflow. I have just a log message here and an in argument called in string country, where I've defined a default value as well. We have an output argument, but we don't care about it for this video. Now, what are process arguments? They are nothing more than normal arguments, like the ones that we probably are already exchanging between our workflows in Studio, but these ones are exposed directly to Orchestrator. So process arguments are to automations what normal arguments are to workflows. Where to define them? There are four places we can define them. One is in Studio, here when we define the arguments with the default value. In this case, the country is RO. The second option is in Orchestrator, when we define the process, we go on Edit and Arguments, and we can have a default value as well in the process definition. In this case, is DE for Germany. The third place is in triggers. If we go to triggers and I create a trigger for this process, I go and edit. And arguments here, I can define here if I want a different value. Let's say FR for France. And I will update it. And the fourth place is to do the same in assistant. If I want to run a process from the assistant, if I click on the three dots next to the process name, I have here show process details and I can define here another country, let's say Austria, and I have to save, don't forget to save. So let's run the process now and see what's happening, which of the value is being picked. If we run it for the assistant, we've just put the value for Austria there, I'll run it. It has finished running and to see what really happened to see the log message, let's go to orchestrator, processes to jobs actually, and see the one which ran a few seconds ago. And we have here the value for Austria, so that's correct. Now, if I go and run the process directly from studio, I will see the log file here immediately. It's RO because it picked the default value from Studio. So that's also correct. And I have two other options. I can run from Orchestrator the process directly. So here I had the default value DE. So if I run it just from here, run, start, I expect to see the E in the log. That's correct. And the last option is to create a trigger. And um, I will edit this trigger here. We have a France as a parameter and we can say, let it run in a few, in one minute from now, I'll update. So the trigger will run in one minute. We just have to wait a few seconds. Let's refresh. So it ran already. Let's go to the jobs. It finished a few seconds ago. Review the logs. And the country is France, as we expected. And the last point to consider is what is the priority? So we have four places in which we can define these values. We have studio and assistant. And we have as well the process definition and the trigger definition, and they are kind of grouped together. So Studio and Assistant, they kind of overlap a bit and process and trigger as well. Why do I say that? If I go back to triggers and I edit this trigger, I go to arguments, I edit this, I delete the value. So if I delete it, it will be inherited from the process. So it will take whatever value was defined as default in the process. If we run this with a trigger as well, 
and if we kind of do the same for the assistant let's go in process details let's delete here the country I will save let's double check it doesn't say anything here but if we run it now from the assistant with no value and let's do it it will take the value defined in studio as default so we expect to see RO for the country let's check that let's update here jobs and we see here RO so the priority is first studio and then assistant if there's no value in assistant it takes the value from the studio and also first orchestrator and then trigger if there's no value defined in the trigger it will inherit the value from orchestrator and that was it I hope this quick video was useful and it will give you more flexibility when designing your automations and drawing them out if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel to be informed of future uploads. Thank you for watching and have a great day.